When one wants to talk about examples of coordination through simple rules, there are two kinds of transactions. One of them are sort of outright transfers of goods, and the other is cooperative behavior. When you're dealing with an outright transfer of goods, it's not as easy as you think. You have to figure out when delivery is going to have to take place. You're going to have to figure out what conditions have to be satisfied in order for the buyer to take the goods. These will typically involve warranties having to do with the ownership of the good, called warranties of title or warranties of merchantability. And it's extremely difficult for anybody from the center to tell you what terms and conditions to a sale ought to be done. More importantly, perhaps, is there's no way any government agency can tell you what the price ought to be for any particular goods or services that are sold by one party to another. Uh, what a market does that a government cannot do is to set a price for sale or a price for labor, which leaves both parties better off than they were before. When governments set these prices, it can easily create a situation in which one party would want to move away from the deal. Uh, the similar problem arises when you're trying to do coordinated behavior. Uh, the simplest arrangement in this particular point is generally speaking a partnership. And assume that you have five or six individuals who want together to put together a startup. And what they're going to have to do is to develop basically a framework in which they can divide the gains and losses of the venture on the one hand and determine their obligations on the other. With respect to the first part, generally speaking, the rules are usually pretty rigid. Each person knows how much they have to contribute to the business and what fraction of the profits they're going to take out during its operation or upon sale or liquidation. But the day-to-day -day operations in a startup are completely chaotic, and the effort to try to specify in advance what each of these partners is going to do is, generally speaking, an impossibility. Partnerships essentially cannot specify at the outset all of the rights and duties that people will have given the huge number of unforeseen circumstances that could arise in any kind of new business. Think about the way in which a startup is going to work and you could realize that business plans can change as much as every day. And so what the common law rules have always done is to stress the notion of good faith behavior. What the rule essentially means is that each of you, when you're engaged in your partnership activities, act as if the welfare of your partners is of equal dignity and of equal importance with your own. Uh, this is hopeless to do in large social arrangements where people are strangers to one another. But the great advantage of a partnership is you get to pick your partners. And if you pick people whom you trust, the chances are that the good faith obligations can be much more faithfully observed. So the secret of our partnership is selection of trading partners on the one hand, coupled with the right mix of fixed rules on the one side, and then these good faith obligations on the other. And only simple rules can get you through voluntary arrangements to those optimal solutions. The simple rule system that I'm talking about is a bottoms-up system in which individuals essentially by individual and cooperative action try to devote resources to their highest value use. Uh, the alternative system is a top-down system in which government tries to figure out who is going to get what particular assets and how they're to be used. Top-down systems in the end rarely work and the reason is that the people who are in charge of them do not have sufficient knowledge of either the taste or the abilities of the various individuals who are involved in a situation. So what they must do is to sort of make commands on the basis of abstract principles. They often miss human motivations. They don't understand how people will subvert the kinds of commands that are imposed upon them against their will. And in effect, they cannot figure out from the center how to orchestrate all of these divergent interests. So the lesson that you sort of learn from this is since many complex ventures require good faith coordination, the most dangerous thing that a government can do is to force people to come together against their will. Thank you.